Hi guys, uh, I asked you this week on my Instagram what theater topic you wanted me to tackle and I was really excited and someone replied, how to ace cold read only auditions. This is one of my favorite topics um, and so I'm really excited to share with you guys some tricks of the trade. So what is a cold read audition? This is basically where instead of preparing something like a monologue, you come to an audition prepared to read selections from the script provided by the director or theater company and those are called <laughs> and those are called sides so i actually just went to a cold read audition and saved my sides which i normally don't do but to use them as a prep uh to talk to you guys about this topic so let's get into it i totally get why this can feel intimidating most of the time in educational theater, we ask for people to do monologue auditions, meaning you prepare something and bring it to us and you've memorized it and you're ready and you deliver that performance and it is more in your control. And so the first time that you go to a cold read audition, you can feel a little bit unprepared, a little bit hesitant about what's going on, and definitely like you aren't as in control over your performance. Hopefully you learn to love them though, because this is a preferred way to audition for a lot of directors, myself included. I love hosting cold read auditions when I'm casting a play and I want to talk to you guys about why and how you can get really good at it. I love cold read auditions because I really feel like if given the right amount of time and the right tools, I can get pretty much anyone to deliver a fantastic monologue audition. But Cold read kind of evens the playing field and shows me what you come up with raw and what your natural speaking voice and your natural talent is because you don't have all of this time to prepare and I get to see how willing you are to play and what kind of choices you make naturally. So I hear some of you saying, but in a play, I would have time to prepare and time to memorize. And I get that argument too. Uh, you could feel like an audition or a monologue audition is closer to what you would actually be getting out of a, a actor in a performance. But um, I just really think that it offers so much insight into who you are as a performer that I don't get to see from monologue auditions and so I'm a stick with it and here's how you can kind of get good at it. So there are three things going on in a cold read audition that I'm looking for as a director and number one is just how well do you read? This might seem a little bit silly or even a little bit like why do you care but reading comprehension and your natural speaking voice and do you get what's going on pretty quickly in a scene? All of that goes into reading and being a good reader is like 90% of what's going on in a cold read audition. So if you don't have a lot of practice reading out loud in front of people, if maybe you didn't go to a school that made you do that or you've never read to like a little sibling or cousin, pick up a book or pick up a play and just start reading out loud. Get used to picking up something that you're not super familiar with and scanning ahead a little bit and reading out loud and getting like warm to that skill. And that is going to be so useful in life even if it isn't something that you continue to use because you don't continue to perform or go on these types of auditions. But that skill is super useful just in life and in public speaking. So getting used to it is never gonna be harmful and it's such an easy thing to practice even if you don't have an audition coming up. I'm a big proponent in using your off time between shows or between auditions to better your performance and 
This is something that is super duper easy to practice and you can never get too good at it. You can never practice it too much. Um, any practice is going to just keep it really fresh in your mind and keep it really easy for you to do. So then the second thing I'm looking for is for you to make big, bold choices. Part of the reason I love cold read auditions as an actor, not even just as a director, is because it kind of affords you the opportunity to be wrong. In a monologue audition, you have been given all of this time where you know this audition is coming up, and so if you make a mistake or if you wobble, there's a little bit less room for error but in a cold read audition, you just got this. And so there's a lot of room for forgiveness for an error in a cold read audition. And on top of that, you can make a crazy choice that wouldn't make any sense in a monologue audition or if you were really playing the part because maybe you're not as familiar with the piece or maybe you misread something or whatever. But I wanna see big, bold, choices. Typically, in a cold read audition, you will get performers who are so nervous about the first thing, the reading, that they forget the second thing, which is the acting, the choice making. And so, very quickly, when you get a cold read script, usually, directors are going to give you a second to just like look it over and do anything that you need to do to understand it and so part of this making big bold choices is identify really quickly what does this character want in this scene so what's going on for them and what's driving that sense of urgency in the scene what do they want and the great thing about cold reads is that over the course of a play a character wants so many different things you don't have to be stuck with the big overarching idea thing that your character wants you get to be in the scene where for two minutes she wants a piece of cake and that's so fun to act and you don't really have to worry about all of the other stuff and you get to go hard in this moment because it is the most important thing that she wants because in this scene it's the only thing that she wants so i love that i just really want you to come in and identify what those things are that your character wants. And then once you've done that, you can start to do just a little actor trickery. So um, there's a Shakespearean concept of operative words. Basically, what is the most important word in a line of Shakespeare? And you put the emphasis on that word. And so I like to take that concept and apply it to cold read auditions because it is a simple way to kind of highlight what the characters acty things that they can really you can dig into are so I'll take a sentence in a line so for instance in this cold read audition that I did the other day um, okay I'm gonna use this line uh, they cut that tree down, it's gone. I would look at that and I would say, okay, that's two sentences. They cut that tree down is one and then it's gone is the second sentence. And so in the first sentence, I would say, what's the most important word in that line? And I'm gonna say cut, they cut that tree down. And then in the second sentence, what's the most important word in the line? I'm gonna say gone because it isn't that important. So, when I'm delivering this line in a cold read, those are the two words I'm gonna put emphasis on, cut and gone. So in a way, that kind of tells the story. For anyone who's been tracking the scene, they're talking about a tree, and anyone who's been tracking the scene, even if they miss the rest of my line, if they hear those two words, they know what's going on. They can fill in the blanks. Tree's been cut down, it's gone now. So if you're like, I don't know what the most important word is in the sentence, I don't know what the operative word is, take a step back and say, what would continue the story even if none of the other words were there? 
and that's sometimes how you can find it. So in this example, I would put my emphasis on cut and on gone. There are lots of ways to show emphasis. You can get louder, you can get quieter, you can slow down, you can change your pitch, you can uh, speed up or slow down. And so I would just really quickly decide how I wanted to put emphasis on all of those words. You might not have time enough to make all of these decisions in a cold read audition, but typically directors are gonna give you a little bit of time and you can scan for maybe some of the most important words in the whole thing and pick how you're gonna put emphasis on those. So in this example, I really love operative words where I can emphasize them in a way that sounds like the word. So an example I like to use of this is crawl. So the word crawl kind of can creep out of your mouth and you can emphasize it by making it sound like the word that it is. And so in this example, I might make my cut really sharp and hit the consonants really hard, make it a cutting word. So they cut that tree down. And then with gone, I can kind of ghost my voice out to emphasize that word, right? So now, instead of just reading that line, they cut that tree down, it's gone, I can say, they cut that tree down, it's gone. And all of the sudden, there's like a character there, and someone who's like a little bit quirky and very bizarre, and there's a mystery to like, where is the tree? I've never read this play, it is not available for me to read, and so I have no idea how it ends. I don't have to be right about the ending. I just have to make a strong choice in the middle. And that's fine. So operative words is one way that I go about tackling that. And it's so easy and exciting and kind of like a shortcut to acting. So that is one way that you can make a big, bold choice. Finally, and I'm gonna kind of hedge, this is like, 3A and 3B, but I feel like it's kind of the same point, which is that if you are lucky enough, and most of the time you will be, unless there's like only one part that you fit, um, but let's say that you're auditioning for like, every play I've ever read, poof, out of my brain. Okay. Let's say you're auditioning for Pride and Prejudice for me this summer, summer 2020. And you could play one of like four of the sisters. You're in the right age range, right? And so it's a cold read audition. I might have you read for both Kitty and Lydia, or if you're a little bit older, for both Elizabeth. Yeah. For both Elizabeth and Jane, right? you want to make those characters different. That's point number three. You cannot read the same for every character. So in a cold read, it's really important to scan through if you're reading multiple characters and pick a couple of personality traits that are going to be really simple. In this cold read audition, I read for two different people. And the first girl, I decided to make like a little bit like the mom of the group, like very motherly and nurturing and like gonna fix the problems, right? The second character, I decided to make kind of the worry wart, like anxious and nothing's ever gonna get solved and what are we gonna do now kind of vibes. People are more complex than that, and your acting should be more complex than that, but it is a simple way to break down a character and show a distinctive difference between them. That shows me that you're doing the first two things. You're reading really well, you're making a big, bold choice, and now you're gonna show me that you understand that these characters are different and that you as a performer are versatile and able to play multiple parts. That makes me want to use you more because even if maybe you don't fit one of the parts super well, if someone reads really well for multiple different parts, I'm like, oof, where can I fit them? Because I want to work with them. Watching them do that was exciting and I want to know more. So 
making those characters super duper different. And this is like where it kind of is like 3B. You're gonna probably read with multiple people over and over again. And this is part of the reason I love cold read auditions. It's because I get to show as an actor something I'm great at, which is bonding with my scene partner and making sure that I'm engaging with them throughout the performance. As opposed to a monologue audition where it's just me and I don't get to show the thing that's so great about acting, which is that live, real time chemistry with a scene partner where you guys are just like vibing off of each other and riffing and feeling like the chemistry in the room. That's something I love as a director too about cold read auditions. People that I might not have ever expected to perform well together or they don't look right together, but they get up there and it's like magic is happening. So you can make a little bit of magic happen. Don't be afraid to ask your scene partner like, hey, would it be okay if when I say this line, I touch you? Or, oh, I think at the end when we're like parting ways, we can like shake hands or hug. Or, um, ooh, I think when I say this, I'm gonna sit down on the ground. And warning that person, just of like a little idea that you have, can make them play off of you really well. So now when you sit down, instead of not being prepared and not looking at you, if you sit down in the middle of the scene, they can give you a reaction on their next line that is maybe like, what are you doing? That isn't just about the thing that you're saying, but it's about physically, why did you just sit down? What are you doing? So it makes the scenes go better. And then when you switch parts with them, like maybe you're reading for the sisters in Pride and Prejudice and all of a sudden they're like, okay, great. Um, now can you guys just switch? Okay, sure. Now you get to flip it. You get to make choices that are not only different than the character you just played, of the other sister, but also different than your scene partner who just played the part that you're now playing. So that's why I kind of put relationship with the different characters and relationship with the other actors in the room on the same finger, but also because I really just love like a three point message. <laughs> so I didn't want to expand it to four. But I think that that kind of relationship between how you're approaching the characters and how you're approaching your scene partners is that last thing that I'm kind of looking for to just show smart and really pointed and deliberate acting that is also super duper fun because when I'm watching two people on stage or when I myself am like really getting into it with a scene partner there's nothing like more exciting and more fun for me as a performer or even as a director than to watch or be a part of that. So I know that was kind of like, boom, 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 do these three things. There's a million other things that you can do. Um, so my biggest recommendation is to grab scripts, grab a scene partner and practice cold rating. Cold rating is so intimidating if you haven't done it before, but it is one of the easiest things in the world to practice. So go for that, give it a shot. Um, this is something that I teach in my acting class a lot. Uh, most acting teachers are going to cover this topic at some point. And so take an acting class um, is great advice as well. And then one other thing that a teacher said to me a long time, well, I'm gonna say two other things about cold reading. Who am I kidding? Two things, okay. Two other things about cold reading. One, a teacher said to me a long time ago and it stuck with me, if at all possible, warm up a cold read. So if you're auditioning for Pride and Prejudice and you can get your hands on a script, read through it a couple times, uh, give it a shot. I have taught for a long time one of the my most favorite actresses young actresses in Louisville who is dyslexic and she often reaches out to companies who are hosting cold read auditions and just lets them know that sometimes that's difficult for her because of her dyslexia and more often than not those companies send her the sides ahead of time so if you have anything like that that makes you nervous about cold reading 
most people are more than happy, I'm always more than happy, to make an accommodation to help you out. And the other thing too is I know that cold reading can be really nerve wracking for a lot of people. I make a lot of my cold read audition sides available ahead of time. If I am on my game as a director and like prepared for auditions before the day of, I will have the theater post a PDF of the sides I intend to have at auditions on their Facebook page or on their website so that if you're interested in auditioning but nervous about cold reading, you can kind of warm one up for me. All of that to say, don't let cold reads intimidate you. And my number one rule is I want to see you holding a script to the side like so and then I can see your face and your eyes and you refer to it and then you come back here and I can see all of the acting stuff that you're doing. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. I want to see this. Your face. Um, so don't put your script in front of your face. Don't block yourself. That's like the easiest thing in the world to do. So I didn't want to include it, but you know, people forget. Um, so I hope that this helps you the next time you have a cold read audition. Don't let it intimidate you. You got to be bigger than the cold read. And I promise most of the time you're going to end up having much more fun doing a cold read audition than you are doing a monologue audition. Um, my last bit of advice and what I intend to do with this guy after I'm done here um, is file it away. So that if I'm asked to come back and read again for any reason, I don't have to ask for it again. It's here. But um, once a cast list goes out or they call me and say, thanks so much, but we're not going to be using you. Or I get an email that says something similar. Um, this is going in the garbage. Don't sit with auditions. You will pick yourself apart and you will get into a really negative headspace of what you could have done better or what you did do, what you didn't do. Did they laugh? You did it better in rehearsal. You got to kind of forget about it. Um, it's the only way to live once you start doing this more and more. And so come up with a system that gets you in an audition, doing your thing and then leaving. And if a cast list comes out and it doesn't go the way that you wanted it to, evaluate your situation. Is it worth it to you to do the show? Is it detrimental to your mental health to do the show? Is it a cast and a crew and a director that you really want to work with? And then move forward for your career and your resume in peace of mind that no one got your role, no one got your show, no one got your solo. If you didn't get it this time, then it wasn't meant for you this time. And that's okay. Being a performer is a mixed bag. You're going to get great things and terrible things and odd auditions that you have to do a monologue and auditions where you have to do a cold read and audition where someone just says, tell me something. And you're like, uh, okay. Or a monologue audition where they're like, do you have anything else? That's performing. That is the mixed bag of being vulnerable and putting yourself out there. And it's okay to feel sad, but give yourself a day to be sad about things. And then move forward in the positive light that that role wasn't your role to have right now and there's something else to be gained from what you're doing so that got philosophical and i didn't really mean for it to i just really love cold reading so i could talk about it for hours and never be done so you know go forth Break legs and hearts. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.